Hello, I'm Hayagami. This is a tutorial on basic everything, which you're going to learn in Hammer Source SDK. Now, to get started, go to Steam. In your library, instead of all games, you want tools. Scroll down the list, which I've already done, and find Source SDK. You'll see Source SDK Base as well. You don't want that, you want Source SDK. You have to own a, a game in the Source Engine. I recommend downloading Team Fortress 2 if you don't own any. Uh, that's for free. Now, double click on Source SDK, it'll bring this up. Maybe not as fast as my computer does, but whatever. Open Hammer Editor. Now, all Hammer loads, I'm going to show you here. If you scroll down Source SDK, down the bottom, we have Valve Developer Community in the link section. This is important. You want to go there for any help, uh, tutorials, advice, or just uh, descriptions and information. So, Hammer, I'm going to go File New, just to get a fresh start, new project. First thing I want to teach you are the tools on the left hand side. Here we've got the selection tool, the zoom tool, although no one ever uses that, believe me. The camera tool, this is only really used once, um, but you can use it to position 3D, 3D camera here in any space in 2D by just drawing a line. So you can see that's changed the view and this is the origin point here. Here's the entities tool. I might as well make an entity now. So um, the blue lines in the 2D views, so this is top, Go to the top left to uh, have a look with your mouse. This one here is side, and the bottom left we have front. And up here is the 3D view. So we're going to click in the center here with our entity tool. That's the, uh, the blue lines, and we'll just make sure it's in the center on this view as well. Uh, so it's top, side, and hit enter. You hit enter a lot in this editor, has to be said. OK, underneath the entity tool, we have the block tool. So what we've just made is this little guy here. I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, um, but you actually want to be using the Z key or the Z key. And you can use that if you just hit it, you'll look around with your mouse. And you can use WSD to look around as well. The arrow keys can do look around as well, but I recommend your mouse. So hit Z again, or Z, to undo that. Now next up is the block tool, which is underneath the light bulb. Uh, here we've got a nice large grid size. We're going to draw a block for the floor. In the 2D view, we're going to move the block down, and then you hit Enter, and you made a block. So the next tool is the Face Edit tool. This lets us change the texture. So here we've got a little picture. It's like a blood splatter or something. I don't know why that's come on first, but it has for me. Go to Browse, and it'll open up your texture browser. This could take a while to load, depending on which computer setup you're using. Here we're just going to go for the good old bricks. Oh, that is kind of a bricks, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to exit this for the time being. And uh, we're going to have a look at the buttons at the top. Here we have things like toggling the grid. I don't recommend keeping it off. I have it on 100% of the time. I never use it with it off unless I just want to see clearly. We've got increasing, decreasing the grid size. This is important. We want the grid size to be nice and big when we start off. We want to make the whole map with a big, nice grid size. And then when we detail, we'll move to a lower grid size. So these two here with the plus and the minus, which are in blue. Uh, loading and saving window states. Uh, I'm still not sure what that is. It's not useful because it always screws up your viewports. We've got undo, redo, and there's a lot of stuff over here, which is uh, you can just mouse over and have a look. Now, um, we use the face edit tool. I'll hit Z I'm in the 3D view again to move around, or Z. Click on a face, go to browse, and we can change the texture. So we've got another greenish brick texture here. That's changed. Hit apply. Click on this one. We'll get another texture, which is uh, this windowy thing here. There we go. So you can see already that it's quite an easy to use interface despite having a lot of buttons and being quite scary. So I'll, I'll get out of this. Uh, underneath that, we have the apply texture. If you're not using the face edit tool and you just want to apply something to the entire thing, click on your brush, which is the name we give for a block. It browse on the right hand side here, and uh, let's say we want to make it this red color, and then you hit the one underneath the colorful block, which is the simple block. It'll make everything on that blush, uh, blush, brush, one texture. Below that we have decals, um, overlays. I'll select this using the select tool at the top, and we find out what the clipping tool does. This one here with the chopped face looks like some kind of slope means that if we click and drag in the 2D view, we can create a slant or just cut something up. 
by clicking multiple times on this tool here, you can change the white and red segments. White means it will be preserved after you hit the enter key on your keyboard. Red means it will be deleted. So right now I want the side in the top right to be preserved. Hit enter. Done. I'm going to undo that because this isn't uh, what I want to do, but that's just a demonstration. Underneath that, however, we have the vertex edit tool. This lets us edit individual points. I'll just bring the grid size down one, lot, one notch. We'll hit enter after dragging to select this. And I can move up, hit enter again. Oh no, sorry. You want to hit the select tool or just get out of this tool somehow. And you've made a slope by editing the points. I'll undo that again. I'll show you how to duplicate brushes now. So we'll drag this upwards, but we'll hold shift while we do that. So hold shift the whole time, drag it up. And I've just let go of shift now. We have we've duplicated this above itself. So we'll just drag this to the side. I'd say move it over a notch. I'll have a look over here. Again, I'm hitting the Z or Z key when I move around. Oh, the texture's messed up because I've dragged it and moved it around. You can see that's very stretched. Uh, I have texture lock enabled here. So we get texture lock, which is fine, but scaling texture lock, I don't want on. Just some of the buttons up here. They're quite self-explanatory. And here we'll go to the face edit sheet. Type in the default, which is 0.25 for scale. And hit apply. A few interesting things to talk about. If you have the face edit sheet open, you select a face. If you have your mouse in the 3D view area, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the texture around, so to sort of shift it on the face. Very useful for quickly moving things. Then you can do it in more detail inside the dialog box. So let's make our room. I'm going to drag this up to 128, which is average room height. That's in inches, or roughly in inches. Then I'm going to drag this shift drag to duplicate and then drag the point over to resize. So now we have these two. I could do the same for the next two walls, but I'm going to be a bit cheap. I'm going to select this, hold control, select this one, shift drag it somewhere. I'm going to move it back where it was. And then if you click again in this selection box here, it'll give you these circles in the corners. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees and then move it outwards like this. And now we've got a full room in one move. If you click it again, you'll be able to skew objects if the uh, points at the midpoints. That's looking quite funky, but we don't want that right now. Click again, you'll go back to your uh, resizing and moving tools. So now we've made pretty much a room. I'm going to select these with control and I'm going to make it double that height. I'm going to select the floor, shift drag that up to make a ceiling. So this is the simplest of rooms, pretty much. Now go back to the face edit sheet tool. You can see how this is all linking together. I'm going to select the walls, change this to a brick texture here. Hit apply. That's quite nice. So uh, next we'll go for the ceiling. Browse. Now, this is all the walls here, but the ceilings could be anywhere. So go to the filter section near the bottom and type in ceiling or whatever word you want to search for. And as long as that word is um, in the name of the material or in the uh, material code somewhere, it'll pop up here. So you've got a few ceilings here. Let's get a sort of a plastery decayed ceiling from Half-Life 2. Hit apply. Floor, we'll search for carpet. So just type it in as soon as it comes up. They'll come up with all sorts of carpets here. You may not have this many. A lot of these are my own, but uh, here's a nice one. Oh, that's a prop. Um, this one's quite nice. You won't have this one. But there, and we've got a, kind of a nice room going on here. That's the basic stuff out of the way. Um, I'll have a look at the stuff on the right here. This is also quite useful. So, um, Selecting here, you can select a group of objects if you've grouped them together. You can select objects themselves if they're within a group, and solids, which I'll get into in a minute. Down here we have viz groups. Um, if you right click on a brush, um, sorry, pardon my word, double click on a brush, or 
an entity, it will bring up this properties menu. The properties dialog uh, is very useful. Uh, it has all the values for your entity or brush. If you click on the wall here, you can see viz groups. So say if this wall, I didn't want it to be there when I ran the map. Edit groups, name, um, food. We'll just check food in here. Oh, blimey. I've made a mistake already. <laughs> um, okay, I don't want that. I want a new group. Sorry, I want a new group. We'll call it um, dust. I'm just thinking of random words. I thought dustbin. Imagine that. So we'll check it, hit apply. And if we uncheck dust here, that'll go. So it's very useful if you want to get stuff out of the way or anything like that. And down here we have two world and two entity. Now, if I wanted a sliding, a simple sliding door, I'll shift drag this down just to get a brush here, resize it to sort of a door shape. This isn't the way it should be done. This is just a very quick way. But there we have a very thin door. If I double click that, you can see it's a brush because this is a pretty empty space here. We just have viz groups. Um, if you go to the bottom right, hit two entity it'll make it an entity, which is not a brush. It's just a sort of a little thing in the level. Change this to func underscore door and hit apply. You have to hit apply for it to work. And you get a blue blob, which means that this is now an entity based on a brush. And we have all sorts of parameters in here, how fast it opens, how, uh, how far it goes when it opens, things like that. And this is a sliding door, func door. And say if I had if I wanted something sliding and I had lots of different blocks like this, um, right? If you have a face selected, just quickly, face selected, shift click, shift right click, and it'll make the entire block here this. Or if you just right click on a face, it'll make that block as well uh, the same texture. So if we select all of this, go to two entity, and make this entire thing a funk door. Hit apply. This will all slide in one go. Now, currently we have solids in the top right here. So if we select each of these, we can do it on like this. But if we double click, it'll be like, like a brush. Go to groups or even objects. Groups is the default. And we'll be able to see it as a front door. So sometimes you'll be in solids mode without knowing. It does get annoying. But you can toggle between these groups and solids and hopefully that will solve any problems you have along the way. Now, this map looks pretty much complete right now. I'm just gonna go into the flags section. Just play around with the tabs, have a look at the uh, things here. It's all on the Valve developer community. Uh, we'll go to touch opens and we'll run the map up here or go to file run map. Also, the F9 button does that. We'll save this as help because that's what I'm giving people. Make sure all of this is set to normal and we'll hit OK. So here's Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Um, I just skipped a part, so uh, that went a lot faster than it should. Um, we'll make sure in Options, Keyboard, Advanced button here, that Enable Developer Console is checked. OK, OK. So now the, the button next to one on your keyboard, it's either a sort of a squiggly or it's um, like an apostrophe type thing. Hit that, you'll bring up the developer console. If your map hasn't loaded already, when you, the game started up, you'll have to do all this. Type in map, and then for me, help. And it will go to the map named help. So here's our map. I've got some nice sort of shadows going on in the corners. That's a setting I have enabled for NVIDIA. Here is our entity in the middle of the room. Here are our solid brushes which surround the world. This currently has no lighting, um, so it will look bland and horrible. But that's fine, I'll cover that in the next tutorial. So if we touch this as we set it to, it moves. It's amazing. Hit it again, and it moves back. So uh, that really concludes this tutorial. I'll link up the proper written tutorial on the community wiki in the description. 
and I will see you again next time.